And welcome back to the third day over here at Gamers 8 in Riyadh, where we decided to switch things up a little bit. If we are watching StarCraft 2 Legends duke it out with one another, we need to have a Legend casting some StarCraft 2 as well. I have taken the role of Kolaris, and Kolaris will be bringing you guys the Grand Finals between MC and Stefano. That's going to be a lot of fun. And I wonder, Wadi, do you think Kolaris still has it? Well, you know, he's, he's been busy with some other games for a while. I know he gets on the desk for StarCraft every now and then. I guess we'll just have to see, mate. Eh? Like, I'm, I'm interested if our boy's still got it. I mean, some of these players do. I think games can bring out a couple of couple of analysis and cast and the castings. Zombie Grub, are two worlds colliding over here? <laughs> I just hope he's not gonna start talking about dropping everywhere and like map vision like being extended depending on what type of game system you're on and stuff. Like, I, but I believe in him. I think he's gonna get it. I think Kolaris knows what game he's gonna be commentating, and um, I'm looking forward to the uh, the duo, the devastating duo that will be him and Ben casting. Oh my. <laughs> Cheeky Cheeky Kolaris absolutely has to be mentioned more than once, otherwise Apollo will be very disappointed. But that is going to happen, we look forward to that. But let's talk about our upcoming Grand Final then, it's going to be a PVZ between Stefano and MC. Both of them winning their semi-final matchup 3-2-1. Obviously, we're gonna see a matchup that we haven't seen yet between these two. Wardy, your first thoughts, who was more impressive in their semi-final? I think MC looked more impressive in the semi-final, but because Stefano didn't really need to show too much. Like, I feel like the first couple of games, like he kind of got messed around, but that was really his build choice was kind of rough. And then the next two games, he just said, okay, what if I kind of do a strategy that's good against Mech? And then he kind of won two games in a row after that as well, <laughs> right? So I kind of feel MC had to work a little bit more, but Stefano will maybe have to step up a little bit to kind of get the finals. It's going to be really difficult because MC probably predicted that he'd be facing Stefano in the finals. And he made the um, correct prediction, unfortunately. Stefano was told. They weren't lies. We really believed them. But we, <laughs> told, we, we kind of told him as well that MMA was probably going to win. We'll take that blame. Uh, so he was only preparing for Zerg versus Terran. But, 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 but. He had trouble finding ZVT. Mm -hmm. I assume they found a bunch of ZVP because he was playing the European ladder preparing for this. So he should actually know what's going on. Stefano has played three days of ZVT versus Bio Ghost only. And he ended up <laughs> only playing against Aliens, of course. And now he needs to play MC in the grand final. As we are taking a look at the map videos. What I've noticed, by the way, is that all these guys look at Golden Wall and they're like, what the hell is that? Never seen that map. Get rid of it. How are you enjoying the map so far, ZG? I mean, I love seeing the old maps. Everything just like throws me back into some of the, uh, I mean, some good times and some bad times, honestly. Like Mech versus Swarm Host might have gotten a little old on uh, Overgrowth a little bit, but overall, I absolutely love even dissecting like what the maps used to do to the game back in the day compared to the maps that we have now. If you guys actually start bringing up in the community, like, the maps prove to be better, I'll, I'll be with you guys. Like, we need to bring these maps back. We need to go smaller. We need to go, like, weird stuff. We need to take away Reaper Cliffs. Like, I'm ready for it. You're trying to start a fight on the desk here, ZG. No fights. Just I think no. everyone can be agree together, man. We need these maps back. You don't remember that one month we had old maps on the ladder? It was the worst People month of the ladder People were so in whiny time. about that. It was a dream for me, okay? A dream? Yeah, a dream because it probably got cheesy for them. I did the exact same thing. I wanted everyone I saw. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, in terms of good games, I, I don't think so. I disagree. No. Yeah. It's fine. I think they've been fun so far, and I'm sure that this Grand Finals is going to deliver. And I had a little chitty chat with Stefano, obviously, in the lead up to this event. And he actually said, I'm supposed to be good in ZVP. I've historically felt very confident in this matchup, but he hates it. He says, it just kind of feels that Protoss can do whatever the hell they want. And I just need to sit there and react to all of it. And honestly, that takes surprise me a little, but I guess he's onto something, Roddy. Yeah, I mean, I guess so a little bit, because in a way, as the Zerg, you kind of have to play to the Protoss' tune for a little while, and you are then the aggressor, and you're kind of forcing the Protoss to defend, but you're kind of figuring out how much you can aggress and when you do have to stop and all of this. So, yeah, I guess in a way, you kind of just have to play to the Protoss' beat a little and sort of see what they do. And we know Stefan always used to like kind of setting the pace, and he liked to set the tone and be like, hey, we're doing this this game, right? Like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm Roach Max, and you're not going to get a chance to do anything. You be the defender straight away, so... I'm really looking forward to how they're going to micro. You know, so often we got up here for the ZVPs of the, the tournament, the main tournament, and uh, we were talking about that early game harassment and the deflection of it. But I'm just imagining Stefano having trouble deflecting what could be uh, subpar Oracle Adept Control from MC. <laughs> 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 just like basically just like knocking each other down. It's just a real slugfest, but in a really comical way. I, I hope we see that because I assume that uh, that will be something that MC is going to try and replicate. 
I was wondering about that because if I think of MC, I think of a lot of things, but Oracle <laughs> Micro is not really one of them. So I'm really looking forward to see if he's going to open like all the other pros have opened in this tournament, or if we're going to see MC bring back some proper special tactics from the old days. Wardy, we're getting close. Any final thoughts for this upcoming best of five? And I want a little prediction. Polaris may not be here, but I'm bringing back the prediction game. Okay, okay. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to have some cool games. I'm excited to see what kind of strats MC brings out because he could also just kind of go crazy with aggression as well, right? So maybe that's something we get to see. I'm going to say Stefano does come out ahead. I'm going to say three to one. Zombie grab. Yeah, I'm going to say that, uh, you know, four spells aren't as good as they used to be, which is what MC was known for, <laughs> and roaches are still fantastic. So Stefano just build the roaches and then maybe add a couple of Ravagers. He'll take a 3-1. You guys think we're going to see any Hive play? Will we see Vipers once more? Is there a chance we're going to see some Carriers, Tempest, Modest Ships? No. No? no just not mass at all? Roach Ravager. Yeah. Like, I think that's like the best oh, option Only possible. if MC does some kind of like Carrier rush, like, you know, ah. the two base into Carriers. Maybe then, but I still think Stefano tries to kill him now. All right, well, the boys are believing in Stefano. Then I'll play Devil's Advocate, and I'm just going to give it to the boss toss. He surprised a lot of us already by taking down MMA. Can he do it one more time? Let's get ready for the grand finals of the SC2 Legends Tournament here over at Game is 8 in Riyadh. Rachel, fancy, the stage is yours. Well, we've already made it to the finals of our Legends Tournament. It's been a short one, but it's been an excellent one, Fancy. Yeah, I'm always enjoying these matches. I haven't seen them in decades. As I'm watching, these matches will be one of the best matches we've seen. Because in the end, I don't expect it. MC against Stefano. Who is going to expect this match? Even Stefano is saying, I'm not ready for this match. Yeah, the predictions for this were a little bit off, according to Stefano. But I would never go against the boss toss. So. Here we are, Zerg, Protoss, about to throw down on the main stage. Takes me back to old times. Honestly, anything could happen at this point. Yeah, the last time they actually played against each other was at a Meltdown show match in Paris. And it was Stefano that came out on top, but just by a round. I mean, it's been a really long time since that match happened, so they could have been able to turn it on uh, and be able to do it again. Nobody knows. We're truly living in the fantasy of going back to the 2013, the, the greatest era of StarCraft, even though we've seen some wonderful games and we will see some great ones later. Let's linger on the legends and let's bring them out one more time. Legend MC! We've seen him be a Murloc. We've seen him as Teemo. We've heard him as Elsa from Frozen. We've even seen him as Iron Man. But will we see him as the victor of the StarCraft II Legends match here at Gamers 8 in Riyadh? هل يا ترى ام سي بيقدر يسويها هنا في هذا المسرح في الرياضي جيمرز 8 يبي يقدر انه يكون هو البطل لستار كرافت 2 ليجندز خصوصا انه في اخر مره تواجهوا فيها ام سي هو اللي كان معها الافضليه مع كاستفانو ابدا لكن كلنا عارفين اللاعب الثاني بي بيكون خصوصا انه اللاعب الثاني هذا جاي مو مجهز للمباراه ابدا هذا امتع شيء صراحه فحرفيا توقع المستحيل ممكن يطلع له فكره جديده اتمنى الشيء هذا خلونا نروح فيه اول The legend, Stefano!
سمعتوه قبل دقائق قليلة جدا كان يتكلم يقول أنا مرة مشتاق للمساحة العالمية أنا جدا مبسوط أني أكون هنا وأحسن شيء أستمتع فيه في هذه البطولة العالمية أني أستطيع أني أفوزها لأن هنا المتعة كلها لكن بنفس الوقت هو قال أنا بحاول أني ألعب جيم قبل ما نبدأ النهائي بس ما أتوقع أنه كان عنده وقت فالآن بيتورط شوي قدام إم سي He won big in Las Vegas at IPL. He's danced on stages in Yunshiping, and we've watched him just glow up over the years. It's wonderful to see Stefano back, but will we see him as champion? Well, we're going to find out real soon. That's exactly what's going to happen. Ahina, I'm going to show you MC. عنده الأفضلية لكن Stefano هو جاهز للمباراة هذه وهم جاهزين الآن يسلمون على بعض يروحون على طول على stages. Gentlemen, please join us center stage to shake hands. امسي مع الصمت الكامل وبدون ما يقول اي كلمه ولا حتى ابتسامه يوريك الجديه اللي موجوده عنده ستيفانو بالمقابل لا هو جاي عشان يستمتع وجاي برضه عشان يفوز لان هذه هي متعته فخلونا نروح على المعلقين نشوف ايش عندهم يقولون. This is going to be a very exciting match the conclusion of our Legends tournament. Here we go. All right, it is going down. MC versus Stefano here. Best of five to determine who is the champion of our Legends tournaments. And I am very excited. Not only will we see if these old dogs can get back on the horse, we'll see if this old desk host can get back on the microphone, Ben. I know I'm not Apollo, but I'm another <laughs> brick that can join you. Oh. And you know what? These guys, we saw them duke it out at, uh, well, almost a decade ago. I think their last match was in 2014 officially, which was a showdown match over at a meltdown. And uh, yeah, 3-2 it ended up being for Stefano, but honestly, their series has been very close between them. Stefano's obviously a legend, MC is a legend, that's why they're both here. And seeing them duke it out in the year 2023, it's just amazing for everybody. I don't think anybody expected MC to be in the final, except for those real diehard fans, because sure, we sure. heard all about MMA. And yeah. Stefano, he's had zero practice he said in this matchup, so he's probably Feeling, feeling the pressure a little bit. The guy wanted to try and sneak in one game before this. I'm like, I don't know if you've got time, mate. We'll see how this is going to go down. But I think something that they said on the desk is very right. In terms of dealing with the aggression, Stefano feels like he has to adapt to his opponent. Stefano was always good at that. And in today's matchup, you're always dealing with those adepts. You're always dealing with those oracles. Of course, we didn't see MC really trying uh, a lot of that uh, just now. But it was all about the stalker micro. So I think he'll be leaning on those stalkers once again. Yeah, and you saw both of them, like both in their matches, they were kind of adjusting, right? Like first game might have been a loss here and there for MC against MMA, but then you saw him divvy back to his stalkers that he's so damn good with. Same with Stefano, went to the Roaches against the mech play. Anyhow, getting on to it. First map here, Overgrowth spawning in the top right. He is the man you know as the boss toss. It is MC. Exciting to see, and down to the bottom, I haven't done an intro in so long, down to the bottom <laughs> left-hand corner here, in the red, it is Stefano. Honestly, Stefano, legends never die. He said this is his third retirement in StarCraft, and I don't believe the man's ever truly retired, you know? He lives and breathes game, and leaves and lives and breathes that competitiveness, and it's just so wonderful to see him back and doing so well. Those first few games against uh, MVP, MVP put up a damn good fight, but you could see the adjustments on the fly, right? Yeah, like, yeah. third game on Cloud Kingdom, it was like, you know what, let's go some Swarm Host Roaches, absolutely destroyed him. Then he's like, you doing mech again, boy? And then he goes for the Nidus and just really shuts him down. This this guy wants to win. I mean, for the longest time, I think the biggest fib Stefano ever told was like, you would always hear him be like, nah, I don't practice that much, I'm, a, I'm all right. And like, I'm, there must have been a moment way back when, when he did put in a lot of practice. Of course, he has excellent in, kind of innate skill, but there had to have been a lot of grind behind what he accomplished back in the day. Ooh, a misplacement of the Nexus to start things off. Maybe a little bit of nerves for MC. I think I saw his little face go, <laughs> hope nobody saw, hope nobody saw. Uh, but no, uh, about Stefano, to be absolutely fair to him, I have seen him leading up to tournaments where yeah, he yeah. literally took it so damn easy. Really, like, really. And relaxed a lot. So I, I've got to give him credit there that he has done that stuff. But I've also witnessed him where I'd come down from the practice room, yeah, yeah. he'd be there practicing already. Yeah. By the time I go to bed, he's still practicing. He's one of those guys, you know, like he knew when he needed it and when he didn't. And I think leading up to a lot of tournaments, he just like, here's relaxed time. I've mm. done all my homework, I've done the studying. Because he's a smart dude, man. Like, 
after uh, all the gaming, he went and did his university. He's now, I think, working at Eurosport as a dev. It's like, a holy guy. crap, he managed to... He managed to make something properly of himself after gaming, and he's a smart dude. Like, if the world champion or if one of the greats of this game couldn't do it, then, you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Looking for an attempt at a block there was MC, not to get it. Now he is going to be opening up with the Adepts, dropping the Stargate in the wall. All seen here by Stefano, so one can only assume he knows what's coming. It's going to be that double Adept initial pressure, that poke. Maybe, as we were talking about before this, probably the Oracle kind of taking kind of uh, inspiration from our modern style that we see here in PVZ uh, to try and just ramp up that pressure. Because, hey, you know, if Cyril and Reyna could take some damage to this in the main tournament, yeah, Stefano can too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. One thing I'm really impressed by all these guys so far is the fact that they're so adjustable to the new builds we do nowadays. Yep. Like, these things weren't there a long time ago. Like, these units that they're playing with, I mean, both these guys have played in Legacy of Void and had some success there as well. But, yeah, they're just adopting all these new strats. And I do wonder if MC... Oh, oh Void Rate? So okay. I almost feel like Stefano wanted the Void Ray instead of over, instead of the Oracle, right? Because he keeps the Overlord there and just like, just wants to keep an eye on what's going on. But it's more likely that a guy like MC would say, let's get a Void Ray, let's clean out this Overlord on this side and limit some of that vision. But it does slow down some harassment potential, I suppose. Oh, it absolutely does. Absolutely does. I mean, it does deny vision for Stefano, but once you see that Stargate, once you see a Void Ray, delaying the Oracles, that's absolutely what you want if you're yeah. a guy like Stefano. And we did see that he was droning up a little bit slower against MVP, just making sure that he's safe and stuff. But in this matchup in particular, you have to drone up like crazy. Because Proros, unlike Terran, they can really zoom ahead in that eco. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, setting up to get a third eventually here, he is. But uh, there's already 10 lings on the way behind all of this. Uh, so for MC, kind of that window for uh, the Adept harassment slowly closing as now Oracles will be in production. But again, you know, Stefano has a lot of reads on this. Spore Crawl is going down to try and fortify those bases. The one thing that I'm seeing as kind of a deviation from what we would normally see with kind of modern Zergs is like really heightened uh, queen production because they are so strong defensively uh, to keep it held down and good to go. Yeah, I mean, he did produce quite a lot early on, which is cool by him. Uh -huh. Look at MC, by the way. It's the Twilight into... Oh, I thought he was making a Forge there. He was for a minute. Then it's like, no, no, a few more gateways. So I really thought he was kind of going for the new-esque style, where you're going to get quite a few gateways out, get that plus one on the go. If we see Blink immediately, then it's absolutely <laughs> an up-to-date build, yeah. which I think it will. Glaives, ooh, this is spicy already from him, because investing in the Void Ray early on, then a single Oracle I think he made, which... Do you, do you think that... Well, okay, so you're getting two gas at the natural. Do you think maybe he, like, trying to almost fake out the third and go for the Adept Printer and try push? It's MC, man. Like, he is shameless when it comes to pressure. Like, that's one thing that I think he kind of resembles Hero in, that he yeah. just wants to attack. That's where he feels comfortable. And being able to attack, especially when you are a little bit rusty, so much easier than defending, it really is. He has still been probing pretty hardcore here, but honestly, getting, like, delaying that forge, Having plus one later with Adepts, they don't really care. They two-shot links regardless. They two-shot drones regardless. He's just going to be wanting to shut down the eco of Stefano very quickly. I do feel like a modern kind of <laughs> MC, though, with kind of a really heightened amount of Adepts could be quite dangerous. Well, I mean, we'll, yeah, as you say, we'll see how it goes. As you say, still three probes going on at any given time. Stefano's looking to shark around to get some information, but now he sees quite a lot of Adepts here with these links. That's enough of a prompt for him to start getting out those roaches as quickly as possible, because it is quite a lot of depths. He's been very good about the Roach production, actually. Like, his lair was very quick. Yeah. Like, honestly, what he's got away with here this game, because this Adept attack isn't normal. Like, the way that he's gone about this, but it's going to pack a big punch. This almost created rest. 18 Adepts on the Ooh. field. Stefano needs to buy time, because this army isn't the strongest as it goes on, but against drones and lings, absolutely shreds them here, Clarice. Yeah, this glaive time is pretty good. He's going to shade in here, trying to get on top of this, or at least get a little bit of information whilst he's killing off all the drones here. Actually shades all the way past the Queens. The Queens have actually gone over to the right-hand side. They're not here to be able to greet it. The Roaches in tandem with this should be able to shut this down eventually, but this is a lot of damage that Stefano's taking. This is a ridiculous attack. Like, there's no war prison with this, but this... Uh-oh, Adepts fighting against Queens. Queens are the new powerhouse in this game and have been for quite some time. They will not win that fight. The Oracle also didn't really get to do too much, and Stefano, only six drones dying to all this chaos, getting the Oracle as well. He's holding man, and after this, Speed Roach is on the field. If there is one man's name that is synonymous with the Roach, both in play and <laughs> lifestyle, it is Stefano. I mean, if you think back to the early days, Stefano in this matchup, he was the 
the old historic Serral in this matchup. His win rate in ZVP was unparalleled by anybody at that time. So if, I mean, as much as he says, you know, in the interviews, oh, I'm, not, I'm a bit scared of going up against Protoss, you know, he still has that mind, that keen mind to the matchup. Yeah, and MC, he's going to want to buy time here. He's doing the right thing, going for Disruptors. He's also going for Blink and the plus one as well afterwards. Stefano's going to look to be a little bit cheeky with the group of Roaches, but he did spot this Warp Prism, and mm. Stefano's very good when it comes to scouting. I remember, like, back in the day, there were heat maps of how much he looked at the minimap, and it was, like, 95% oh, yeah. of the yeah. time, like, absolutely... Uh, crazy in here. Just kind of setting himself up. That creep spread is starting to get going. Fourth and fifth base getting produced. Swarm host oh, Stefano wow. coming, bringing heart of the swarm back here. He's trying to mentally break MC in game one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey man, do you remember this era? It's like, yes, I do. It made me quit the game. He's going to bring it back right in game one. I mean, honestly, if he starts setting up what is kind of that modern swarm host style against Protoss, where you have the Nidus Worm on either side and keep bouncing back and forth and just never let the Protoss get to your side of the map, that's actually terrifying for MC because once the pressure gets put on against MC how is he ever going to get on the other side of the map what you say actually is totally right like these maps do prompt that swarm host kind of esque play yeah. like you see the main base of MC just below it that is a perfect spot to put a nidus worm you just fly into that main base can potentially kill the nexus knock out a lot of these pylons that's a juicy artosis pylon there powering up quite a bit we love you dan <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do. We've got ourselves the upgrades on the way as well. Uh, no carapace uh, getting going here. Well, actually, do you already have carapace? No, no, you no. Just going straight up for all that damage upgrades, getting yeah, the hive yeah. on the go as well. And MC's done a good job of keeping up in the work account. That's something that Stefano hasn't been too shameless about. But honestly, when it comes to swarm house, you don't really need that high drone count because you're not really you're not really aiming to lose these swarm house anyway. They're no. just going to potentially deal damage constantly. But MC's very good with his stalkers, man. That is. He's very solid and always has been. I always felt like it was his favorite unit. I mean, without asking him, of course, you know, it could be something different, but him and Blink Stalkers, just like uh, Stefano was synonymous with Roach play, MC was synonymous with Stalker play and the Blink that comes with it as well. These Swarm Hosts are going all over the place, actually, here. You can see MC uh, very furious in actions at the moment, trying to keep up with what Stefano is bringing to the table. But again, MC surpassed my expectations for this tournament. I'm very impressed from the previous series coming into this game as well. Yeah, he he's actually playing like a pretty damn good Protoss, you know? If I didn't know better, I'd be looking at both these guys. I'm like, yeah, these build these cool. styles, mm. they are cool, they are cool. They're a bit out of whack and stuff, uh -oh. but they're actually playing the game very legitimately well. And here, a few Immortals. I mean, that that is a very makeshift wall, obviously, because it's a big, big natural, but that is some good blocking without the F2 being used by MC. Yeah. Solid play, actually. He's surviving. Yeah, there was no gap between that pylon and Cybernetic score that I thought might exist, but it's not to be the case. The Immortals will shoulder that off. Corrosive Bio lands, doesn't quite connect, and here are the Swarmers. They actually just walked up to this base and just dropped the Locusts. <laughs> That's not what I expected. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I thought Shield Battery was good. That thing needs a buff, Kolaris, because he was oh. fast about starting that as well, and actually target firing, but all, all the Swarm hosts being caught over here, and that's not what we want, and also they're kind of floundering around a little bit. They're not even running back on the creeps. Stefano, he's almost sacrificing these bad boys, but not without a fight, but Disruptor hits on these lings. Oh, my goodness. Where were all the reinforcing units? Now they're coming to try and deal with this. Actually catching the Disruptor was a great little pick-off there. Already getting a surrounding Immortal as well. Corrosive Vile on this left-hand side against the Stalkers. But all these roaches up on this high ground here, trying to take out the Immortal. This is trade for trade, blow for blow here. But I feel like Stefano's economy is going to be strong to get back off of this. I mean, it really is. Uh, like, you see the supplies. Stefano's still ahead in that regard, but... And he's got a massive bank, actually. I mean, those Swarmos definitely bought him some time maxing out and what have you. But they didn't do enough, I feel. But MC, his army... Fairly trashy, if we're being honest. Yeah, like, what, yeah. what, what does he have to deal with this many lings and roaches? And we've got to remember, it's Hive Tech as well. Stefano survived to the later stages of the game. All right, yeah. I, I mean, uh, he's loading up a War Prism here and trying to get in there, but I'm always wanting a little bit of AoE damage here in the Protoss Army to Ooh. try and deal with this. You're going to have to blink away, but if this army gets on top of what MC has right now, MC is done. So he's going to have to buy some time with these War Pins here in the main base, try and put some harassment and draw these units back to keep his opponent on the back foot. Yeah. Oh, and the links oh. finally make it in here, and these bad boys will soon have plus two. Not just yet, but we do see big upgrades on the way for these units, but any little bit of chaos you can cause on the other side of the map is a big deal. Probes are not mining this main base anymore, and honestly, the supply of both of them. Is Stefano just trading a lot better in these fights? I think he is. Let's have a yeah. look at the resource loss tab. Very close, but yes, Zerg having the edge. I mean, 
That's not what we want, especially when you threw away all those Swarmos. No, and especially when Zerg is just mining more right now here down towards the bottom. And now the Roach is going to move into Assault location towards the third and fourth. If you seize this position between them, it kind of cuts off reinforcements to this location. Of course, you could recall, but it's going to be a disaster if you do, as now Bailings will roll forward. It's not doing too much to those Stalkers, but there's still a lot of Roach numbers. And the units on the left-hand side, overcharged from the youth, forcing the probes away here are the Zerglings to deny more mining. Uh, I think this might be the beginning of the end here. These Immortals, they've got no fodder in front of them. Nice War Prism pick up here. There are going to be reinforcements from the right-hand side, but there is just so much Zerg here. This is low-tier Zerg, low-tech Zerg, but there's just so much of it. And Sivanus just streaming across the map, and MC, he's not mining enough to keep up with this. Yeah, and, and with all of these units being broken down for Protoss as well, even he could reinforce with a ton of roaches if he wanted, but an Ultralisk Cavern just finished off the back of it too. So if Stefano wanted, he could augment this army with even more power if he so desires. I mean, look at the creep spread as well through the middle of that map. He's going to have all vision unless a drop goes on that left-hand side into the main again, but MC has no room to do that, and another Ling run by into the natural, into the main. I mean, this this bank of Stefano is just not going down, man. This is off 65 drones, yeah. but all his units are actually being microed so damn well. It's not about, like, the Zerg mass. It's about how you micro the Zerg, which Stefano is actually doing very well in these fights. He's running him ragged. Absolutely running him ragged. Pulling him to that left-hand side, pulling him to the right-hand side here. All the probes can't do anything. 23 more go down. Zealot warp in to try and shut this away, but Stefano now almost 100 supply lead. The next blow has to be hugely impactful for MC otherwise he's done. Yeah, great pull away with these drones as well. This base is sort of forfeit, but it's only because Stefano's letting it happen. Yep, he's yep. getting ready for one big swell. He knows if he wipes out this army, he's done the eco damage necessary. And soon we might see a Ooh. massive flood of units. And look how many roaches he has on the map here, James. Yeah, it's a lot here with plus three weapons as well. Going to be charging in against this, trying to focus down some of those immortals on this left-hand side as well. Once those go down, the warp prison micro is not going to be enough as well. That's GG for game number one. Stefano will take Take it. it was back and forth. I thought the Swarmos were going to do more. MC caught them off guard, but Stefano with the follow-ups just brutalized him. Absolutely. Like an unusual adept follow-up there from the Void Rain Oracle. Like it hit a bit later, but Stefano actually handled that very well. Only six drones lost. He yep. got the roaches out in pretty good time, <laughs> giving a little fist bump here behind the camera, smiling his ass off. That is the Stefano we know and love. No, definitely, definitely. I mean, MC, it felt like a lot of the moves he was making, like a lot of the choices early game he was making, they seemed like the right choice. Mm. Get some adepts out, try and go for a Stargate. I mean, the Void Ray early, you know, doesn't do a whole lot other than deny some vision, but then the Oracle is coming along, but none of this really did harassment damage here to be able to kind of put the Zerg in a bit of an uncomfortable position. No, we've definitely seen the evolution of Proyosh just this tournament alone, where they put so much into slowing the Zerg down very early on, yeah, almost yeah. heron esque where it's like, all right, these Adepts, they have to be used to kill drones. These Adepts again, more drones. These Oracles, they have to be fast across the map. But here, not enough of that was being done by MC. And he let Stefano flourish on the other side of the map. Overgrowth it was. And Stefano just ran away with the game. And once he got flowing, his bank just never went down. Even though the War Prism, he tried to get stuff done, mm -hmm. Stefano's in good positions all the time. And sometimes you need to be a little bit shameless. Bring out that hero, you know, and look at that. That is a, <laughs> that's a happy boy after one map win. <laughs> Awesome stuff to see. Again, you know, it's a little bit surreal to me, Ben, to, well, we'll not only be here in the casting seat uh, we're alongside you, but I'm having a good time. But also, again, just to be casting these guys in 2023. Mm. Like, the fact that we've had this opportunity to see these guys play once again. I mean, yeah, Stefano, we've seen him in more recent memory. But the fact that MC's sitting across from him, what a, what a treat. What a treat. I mean, this is amazing, honestly. Like, these guys have been away from the game for a long time, and there's still players today that play every day that still don't have a uh, scratch of what these guys have, but yeah. when you think about how many hours they put in the past into this game, this was their lives through yes. and through, you know? 10K hours apiece, even more. And honestly, getting to see them kind of shine and get one last chance on the main stage. And I asked both of them backstage, and it was like, hey, do you enjoy it? It's like, mate, this is absolutely a great. And MC was just kind of Fantastic. fist bumping, like even when talking <laughs> to him in private. Fantastic. Frost will be the second map here, spawning over on the top right-hand side as our blue Protoss. It is MC. Previously of SK Gaming, we know it's true. Oh, a little spawning pull. But anyway, spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner. Previously of Millennium, previously of EG, it is Stefano. 
I like doing a cheeky pool play like that. Yeah, yeah. On, on a four-player map, we don't get these so often. Like, MC is very fortunate. They will get to scan it first. I can't believe of the two people sat at the casters, you are the one that said cheeky before me. Unreal. That is true. But isn't it cheeky, cheeky, Claris? It's usually That's somebody saying one. it to you, That's isn't it? That's the one. Everyone does it still ah. 10 years later. <laughs> Mate, che cheeky will never leave my repertoire. It has to be there. I watched you guys a lot in the WCS days. I even got to cast with a bunch of you in the WCS days. So yeah. that was very nice. But getting a scout off first against this, this is not what Stefano wanted. Doesn't mean he's like significantly dead or anything, but that is very fortunate for MC. Yeah, I mean, taking these kinds of risks on a four player map, right? Like, you can maybe catch your opponent off guard very, very quickly. Of course, now this hat trick is going down. MC's sticking around to see this, and he does see it. So he knows it's not the biggest of commitments, uh, but the fact that he's already scouted this out very nicely is a, a boon for MC. Yeah, and he's really respecting this pool first as well. He's like, you know what? I need a forge, getting the wall up. Gonna make. He's probably going to make a cannon with this. True. I don't, don't think it's all entirely necessary. Agreed. But different eras, James, different eras. I remember when it was like the forge, fast expand, or like die trying kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know, from a long time ago. But Back this, got six probes. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is a Rotterdam wall if I've ever seen it. The double layer with the pylons in the middle. Beautiful stuff. Well, you say beautiful. I call it kind of ugly. Uh, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, the thing is as well is that one another reason why you might not necessarily need a forge is because actually Stefano didn't know the initial spawning place of MC straight away. So those links were actually a little bit slow uh, as we have a few cancels here to try and neaten up this wall a little bit. He actually went over towards that middle Zelnaga watchtower and then went north after the Overlord had been able to spot. I mean, it could have been even worse for Stefano. If you'd have got cross spawns all of a sudden, you wouldn't have known for ages. I actually like a lot of what MC did there. He was like building a second unit. He was winning the cannon. Cancel both to get that nexus up a little bit faster. That was good. That was good because, you know, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been in a lot of these situations before, realizing like, oh, I don't actually need this and just being like, OK, OK, let's make the choices on the fly here. Uh, nice play out of them, MC. A few probes, a little bit idle there as he's just waiting for them to get into that gas. It's a minor thing, but they, I mean, they could have had a few more uh, minerals here and there. One guy worked out a long time ago that if you have those guys mining, like the 17 out of 16 kind of thing, or yeah, the 18, yeah. It kind of slows it down a little bit because they're finding their way and it takes ah, a yeah, the little bounce around. Yeah, it takes an extra like 20 or 30 seconds for them to find their rhythm. Never mind so, them. So, actually, MC, on point, James. Absolutely on point here. You've scuppered me. You've scuppered me, mate. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should, I should have done that. I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, no, but Stefano's expanding quickly. He's also expanding towards his opponent. I yeah. mean, that is a little bit closer. But when you look at these old maps, the base is so far away for these Zerg players to really get away with. And I mean, equally so, very far away for these Proruses. Taking a third base on this map in the new age, it's going to be difficult. I mean, when Stefano expands out like this, this really reminds me of actually the old style that Stefano would do. Just have a launching pad to just make mass roaches and just barrel down onto a natural location. However, uh, these Adepts now going to get in here, try and do some damage. All focusing Lings to start things off, though. No drones will be victims just yet. Uh, wow. So this could have maybe gone a little bit better for MC. That could have gone way better. Like yeah. the, the one thing you don't want to focus is an extractor, which actually happened with the first shot there. Yeah. And then the Lings as well. It's just like, go for those drones. Like if those bad boys pick off three drones, actually worth their weight in gold. But here, didn't get anything. It's going to go for the Boy Dre again. Like I like the little bit of a change up by him. But Stefano, even with the build order kind of deficit here, he's actually doing Bang, all right. Yep, definitely is. As uh, He's just going to reinforce his position at the front. There's the Roach Warren that I'm sort of anticipating maybe that old style of Stefano to come back. I mean, of course, though, that being said, like, it, it's a very different time now in StarCraft 2. So uh, things like this choke point up at the top, uh, not too bad to actually hold on a map like Frost uh, here. Pylon going down for him to take the third towards his opponent as well. This is a very open area, actually. So, and uh, look how close it is to the Zerg base. That's, uh, we don't see that in modern StarCraft. No, we don't. <laughs> Their third bases are literally a screen apart here. If I'm Stefano, I'm like, did you not learn from last game, mate? Like, I'm going to make Swarm Host again here, because launching them from here, Fleet Beacon this early on. Maybe he's like, you know what? Have you not heard of a Tempest, mate? Maybe. This could be awesome. Yeah. Oh, this could be cool. As already, Creep is going to spread on that right-hand side here to get things going. But Infestation Pit down very fast here for Stefano as well to really start rocketing up himself. His drone count's so low, man. Like, it, this 40. is... 40. Yeah, if you watch this, you're just like, 
Holy crap. He is from a different era, man. Like, yeah, yeah. And he, he's back to showcase what he's got. But the Fast Infestation Pit definitely signals that he wants to go Swarm House. But honestly, the mix-up from MC going for this double Stargate play. Very fast plus one air weapons. Rotterdam somewhere in the green room just cheering away here. Mm -hmm. But very, very cool out of both of them. I do think this works out better for the Protoss player in this case because Swarm House just don't shoot up. But That's true. Stefano has to realize or find out what's going on very soon. Oh, carriers are going to be the unit of choice. I mean, I like that as well. Yeah, so in, uh, we actually have the Swarm host in production as well. There is one Overlord to the left-hand side of uh, MC's base that could try and get in. These links are trying to get information at the front. But all he's shown so far is that the Void Ray and the Oracle, aside from some Adepts, uh, so he doesn't have full info on this. I'm surprised he didn't like morph in an Overseer and have a little bit of a poke around to see what was going on. But as soon as these carriers pop out, man, this is, this is actually scary for Stefano, I think. It's really scary. Like, the dream scenario is he's on 60 plus drones, maybe 66 here. He can actually afford to get spore crawlers down, getting a spire up and stuff, but he has no idea whatsoever. I think his only units that shoot up are queens, and they're damn good. Oh. But plus one carriers, you're going to need a lot of queens, some spores to deal with that, and he just has none of it whatsoever. And MC, he's on the ball this game, man. He's been scanning continuously. I say that, and he loses his Oracle directly right there, but the locusts do start coming. Oh, well, that is not enough to get much done. Yeah, but it's just a trickle here to start things off. And actually, they're shooting a bit sporadically. They're much stronger when they all fire at the same time, because then it's not it's more difficult to actually focus these down, especially without splash damage. Uh, so a little intravenous feed of this. But the Queen's around the corner now. Once he sees these first two carriers, he needs anti-air quick. These Queens at the front will not deal with this. No, they won't. I mean, he's going to continually uh, like bar barrage this base here, but oh. those interceptors, I'm just looking at Stefano's face here. I want to see what's going on in the mind of this man. Yeah, uh, he has a few Queens extra in production. Now he starts to spire here to try and deal with this. A little more spore crawlers are going down, but if MC starts like doing significant damage with these carriers, it could snowball. Absolutely could. I mean, the tech of Stefano, the eco Stefano is so damn low. He was going for a massive all-in. He was not expecting Expecting this, and MC has thrown a massive curveball here, and these carriers go completely uncontested behind it as well, kind of anticipating that he might need to switch into gateway units very soon. He's like, you know what? Let's get some stalkers for those potential corruptors are going to make. He's playing wonderful. He's going to try trade for trade here with these locusts still putting on some pressure himself, but again, a spire builds so slowly, so he's going to have to rely on queens here for quite a long time whilst losing this base. And let me push down to two base here. And again, I mean, even when this spire actually finishes up, how is Savano's economy going to look? because you said he was on low drones for so long in this game. Yeah, it's not looking good for him whatsoever. And you know what? These carriers, what a great choice it's here. Great, yeah. But, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Uh-oh. More. Well, he could focus down the Stargates, no? Uh, he probably could. I mean, <laughs> locusts are surprisingly strong, you know? <laughs> uh, OK, OK, bye that, bye. Does, that does hold the carrier production. That will keep him in it. But it's also like you hold the carrier production, but now a lot of stalkers can come as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, what? Yeah, four carriers at least. I, I, I'm sure another two actually finished up. Yes, they did. So four carriers alongside any gateway reinforcements that actually come along here is going to be absolutely brutal for Stefano to deal with. Catches some of these swarm hosts as well. A few launch forwards, but I think MC here is going to be looking for a, a finishing blow soon after losing those two stargates, especially. Uh, and carriers hunting down swarm hosts. What year is it? It's 2023, and we have a situation like this. Both 100 supply. MC's on three bases, though, and honestly, his eco, he's been very good with macro, producing six gateways to Templar Archives. He's getting ready to land the uh, killing blow, just like you said. Yeah, yeah. It's, it might take a little while beyond this, because so he's just chasing these swarms around. <laughs> so he's keeping his eco alive himself with 60 workers on the board. Um, but, I mean, beyond that, once these actually get back with the rest of the main force, I think he has, what, eight corruptors? Uh, five and then four are about to finish here. So uh, going up to 10 now, actually. He has one roach on the field. Yeah, that's not great. That's not great. No. He's like eight gateway stalker that's going to come out and also has the potential to make some high Templars, to make some Archons as well. Stefano is in this game just to kind of get a feel for it. I do feel at this point just to be like, all right, all right, thinking that maybe he's kind of remaxing or remaking those Stargates, but he's going to have a big surprise when this army comes over here. And that is so many gateway units here. And he doesn't want to be losing any of these corruptors as well. And even if he does, he's then going to have to rely on things like corrosive bile as well as these queens to try and deal with those carriers once they come along. But I feel like it's a really strong one-two push here, punch here from MC. He can come in with this composition and absolutely dunk on what Zerg has right now. Yeah, I, I, Stefano has very little chance in this game. He's going to hope for MC to somehow I don't know, fall off a share multiple times here, but that is so many units from the Protoss player. And he's going for Corrosive Bile, or yep, rather yep. Uh, the Acid Spray over on Nexus, which will shut it down, but 
MC's just doing more damage on this side of the map. He has to be careful, though. MC, or Savar is still taking some very decent fights with what he has against this. Definitely working with what he's got for sure here, as the focus will go down on some of those Ravagers as well with these carriers. Here come the Corruptors now. He needs the Stalkers to be actually able to deal with those Corruptors up the top. Keep those carriers alive at all costs. Once the anti-air is dead, you can actually reign supreme over that low ground units. As now focusing down some of these Corruptors here, trying to deal with them. But two carriers have already gone down. A second one actually gets hit by Corrosive Bile almost. Another one falls. I'm surprised he sort of didn't recall out during some of that, because I mean, what are you supposed to do if you're that kind of disjointed in a fight like that? And actually, Stefano did as, about as well as he could have. Yeah, Stefano should have been dead. He yeah, absolutely should yeah. have, but Stefano was, uh, what's it called, transfusing the uh, the Corruptors there in the air. I'm kind of losing my words, because this is not your normal game, but Definitely not. the second wave is going to be coming over here. And Stefano, even though it got away with surviving that wave, he did lose his third base doing it. Yes, he killed a third base, but MC's work account has not been touched throughout all of this, and yeah. it's going to be a ridiculously hard one for him to hold. That will be the absolute crutch of this game, right? The fact that, OK, this fight was a little bit disjointed here and there, but the fact that MC's just been big building up at home, big mining back at home, as much as he did lose his third base and he's trying to get that back up, but it was all just a little bit too much. Dodge those corrosive files, now he's got Storm on play as well, and he'll be able to push these Roaches and Ravagers back. He certainly will. There's only a couple of air units on the field left for MC and Stefano. He's got a few Roaches and a few Ravagers, but this is just so much Protoss again in the storm. The one carrier over there taking on the three spores. The one place he has the spores, and the carry goes right at it. Storms are big, though. Landing on all these Zerg units. Oh, man. Yeah, but can we focus on the three spore crawlers? No. <laughs> hey, they were perfectly placed <laughs> spore crawlers, OK? They were perfectly placed. Stefano, what a god. <laughs> he retreated all the way. Come around, carrier. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, but these Roaches and Ravagers don't stand a hope here against this kind of army. The two Archons at the front really powering down this location. Look how many more Stalkers are on the way here for MC. And these two Corruptors, OK, I guess you can go and try and chase this as well. Hey, those spores have been amazing, man, against this one carrier. All the Interceptors gone, wasting his Mineral Bank. That is Whoa! awesome for Stefano, but MC, look at this. And his backer has been clean. Look at his Mineral Cap, yeah. constantly low. I'm actually very impressed by these old school players with how well they've been mappering in a very Whoa. different pace of game and 1-1 one, one, tied up. Oh. GG, we've got a series on our hands here. Again, you know, a lot of people came in thinking, Stefano, I think he's going to look really good in this tournament. How are the other guys going to look against him? But MC is able to push him. Admittedly, Frost, a, a spawning pool first, a little bit of an ambitious third to try and kind of take through all of that. And he didn't spot the carriers, which were really, really pivotal here. And scouted first, like immediate yes, scout. Yes. MC actually responded pretty decently. Obviously, he put up the forge and stuff just to get the wall going, started making the cannon, realized he didn't need it. Got the Nexus up fairly early as well. And honestly, I liked his strategic choice there. Going for the air units instead, like I, I kind of joked about Tempest being a thing, but just utilizing that airspace would be very good with carriers, as you saw, and absolutely caught Stefano off guard. Stefano went for a very all in play there, and he's 1 0 up. I mean, he can afford to do that kind of stuff, yeah, but yeah. it did not pay off here. I like the gamble as we take a look back here with the, uh, again, the kind of slow swarm host aggression that actually came along with just a few shots here and there. But yeah, as soon as these two carriers are actually revealed to the three queens, it's all hands on deck for Stefano. Otherwise, it's a bullet in a china shop for MC, just be able to run around and destroy everything. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, some of these fights with Stefano, I really thought he should have died many oh, times, but he micros very well with his army. Like, Stefano's micro is very good with Zerg. Like, e even in today's Zerg, you see a lot of the very high-level Zergs do all the micro that, you know, they used to do of old kind yeah, of thing, yeah. but Stefano's working with a lower drone count, so he really needs to micro Zerg like a Terran. So he's making life harder for himself, yeah. but you can see why he was so good back in the day with this kind of stuff. I mean, was he ever above 45 workers in this game? I think ba it was basically, a... no. No. Basically, so, no. As a Zerg, you feel so hamstrung in that situation, because normally you're working with a, a 60, a 68, even an 80 drone count, sometimes even higher. But anyway, let's get to it then. Cloud Kingdom, spawning over the bottom left as the Red Zerg. It is Stefano. And up to the top right-hand side, it, it, yeah, as you say, it's Cloud Kingdom, I can't wait. Okay, we've got our blue Protoss here. It is MC. The famous GL, comma, have fun from Stefano. That's something I haven't yeah. seen before this story in a long time. The last time I remember it being a, 
a big a big thing was when he said it over to Hero. I know they brought it up on the desk, and mm -hmm. Hero was nice enough to write it back, and it's like, okay, you're not disqualified now. Thank you, Hero. So uh, <laughs> Hero being a nice bro there. But yeah, no no super early probe scout from MC, so it's not going to be blocking the hatch or anything. That's nice for Stefano. So he gets to play his game without too much interruption here. So happy the Space Sharks are back as well here for Cloud Kingdom. Good old times. And I, I said it on the desk, actually, for the previous series. This is the kind of map, Cloud Kingdom, that actually inspired so many other map formats. If you look at some of the newer maps, they actually look a lot like Cloud Kingdom in terms of their structure and composition. So, yeah, I feel like it was, as much as it's smaller than those maps, of course, because it was way back when, it's it was really ahead of its time. It really was. It really was. Like, I remember bunker rushing Idra many times on this map and having beautiful, <laughs> beautiful times. I also remember getting Blink Storm Walker all in on this map, many, many beautiful times. Like, yeah, look yeah. at that ledge around the main base. You can imagine Max Pax right now salivating over watching this. It's like, oh Wait my goodness, minute. I would never lose yeah. on this kind of map against Terra ever again. But uh, no, I mean, like, honestly, this brings back very good memories. Like, I just love how most of the Zelnagas are in the middle as well. Like, yes, very, yes, very exactly. pivotal points where it's like, okay, that makes you safe, gives you time to react. There was a lot of fail safes back then that was like, you know, we were all a little bit worse back then. Like, yeah, regardless yeah. of what people try and tell you. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love seeing it again. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Zelnaga Towers because we were talking about it in the back, right? Like, compared to today's maps where if we had Zelnaga uh, Towers, which is just very rare anyway, they're normally way off to the sides way out of kind of the very important zones of how these units transition. But yeah, I mean, it would be often times where Zergs would just send, make two links to start things off or one uh, uh, yeah, and try and just find themselves that uh, kind of area control in the middle of the map and hold on to that until they saw the uh, Protoss move out. One massive thing was like Terrans and Protosses would send their first unit out and wait by the Zell Naga. Yes, then yes. you'd see a unit come across the map that's like, oh, now I have to run home kind of thing. And then the other player would know that that was happening, then bring the rest of their army across just yeah. so your opponent didn't know. So lots of little mind games could happen because of that kind of stuff. Yep. MC is opting for the Stargate play again. Now, I like that by him. It's just Protoss have showcased that you can do so much with it, so many different follow-ups and all that kind of stuff. I do wonder if he is going to take a page out of the New Age Protoss book though, where it's just it's like, you know what? Oracle, Oracle, Oracle. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I know he isn't the big Oracle guy. He just showcased that he was pretty damn good with the carriers in that game, but dealing damage early on is what you absolutely need to start doing in this matchup. I mean, it definitely requires some specific control. He's going to start with a Void Ray again to kick things off. But again, if an Oracle comes along down the line, yeah, a little bit delayed compared to your, what we will consider your usual timing here. But Stefano has already got his third base up here and the Double Adept is spotting this. And slowly chipping away at it, but I mean, ultimately, one thing that actually was always a problem way back when was connecting these bases when mm. like, Protoss put initial pressure on. And then sometimes you would see that third be slowly whipped down because eventually queens can get over there but with heightened queen production and the like uh, it's actually much easier to now just eventually get over there and shut down a protoss being annoying absolutely absolutely oh it's such a dream when you only had one queen per hatchery basically and it was like <laughs> oh i can actually deal damage oh, in her ass great. then it's like oh these guys have more rage now oh you're making eight of them now like <laughs> very very different oracles will start being produced here MC keeping most of his adepts alive by the looks of it. One did get caught on the map, and he obviously lost uh, an overlord there, I do believe, to this void ray. But so far, both of them getting their third bases situated here. That little probe going to make it all the way home. I think MC's a tricky guy. I think he's going to do something completely different this game. I mean, of course, you've got the third going up and good to go here, but MC's the kind of guy that will try and vary up builds as much as he possibly can to keep his opponent off, off kilter a little bit. I mean, even back when he was doing like his all-ins, all-ins, all-ins and looking crazy with his timings, he would still really mix in a few different things here and there to keep his opponent guessing. And mixing it in, he is. I mean, oh, it is a fleet beacon okay, again. Okay. But after seeing how well it worked in game one, oh, that was an adventurous drone over there. Don't know where that bad boy was going, uh. but... Uh, <laughs> I would love to think it was like for a proxy hatch or something, oh, but like yeah, obviously yeah. not in this uh, <laughs> situation. But second Stargate coming up for MC. Again, Roach War on the way, Evo Chamber on the way. One thing that's very different this game, though, for Stefano, doesn't look like he's opting for an all-in here, so he's going to be far better situated yeah. against this kind of build. I mean, just uh, not opening sport, running pool first is also, you know, quite helpful. I suppose. Oh, the timing he did it, I suppose. And he's already got way more drones, like yeah, good 50 yeah. more than he had the previous game, so that's great for him. Good scouting continuously by Stefano, just making sure that it is a third base and it's not like, oh, you're not probing this thing up. So just keeping count with what he can. Not utilizing, uh, well, soon he'll have Lair Tech, so then maybe you can get an Overseer on the other side of the map. But this Oracle so far, just kind of a scouting Oracle, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, seems so. And yeah, you were right. I mean, he was really enjoying that carry game from prior. So we're going back into that here again. Um, as you say, for Stefano, he should have so much better responses to this, or at least try and get some information a little bit earlier as this fourth base. Now, a fourth base on Cloud Kingdom actually leans a little bit closer towards your opponent here. And again, it's not exactly the biggest map. So forces the cancellation. We'll be getting that down once again. Oh. But, you know, this Void Ray being a cheeky pest. Get out of there. It certainly is. Like, having no Protoss ground units move out onto the map definitely worries you a bit as a Zerg player. Yeah. And you, you can feel that from Stefano here. Like, he is 20 supply behind, but it's also because he has no idea what he's up against yet. He hasn't been able to scout that main, hmm. and he's just like, wait a minute, is this is this a charger all in? Now, the Observer is showing us that if he was looking very closely, he'd be able to see that little Simon it's called ticking away yeah. there, but Stefano actually is so in the dark right now. He has sensed something, so whether he saw that upgrade going, he is starting a Spire of his own, getting the Roach speed upgrade, getting more Queens as well, hmm. but most importantly, droning up. He needs to keep up in that count. I mean, even before seeing that Simon in his core as well, you've got to be wondering, as he kept running by this third base, where is all this gas going? You have six gases churning for a long time at this point. So what are you doing? And you open up with a Stargate, so it must be something of that similar ilk. As now Ling's running around here, but this is going to be a lot of carriers. Uh, as we said, thankfully, he's got his Spire up and running a lot earlier, so those Corruptors will come out pretty swiftly. But I don't know if he's going to be in time to deal with the fourth base defense. Oh, I mean, this Ling that's patrolling over here is just going to miss these carriers by the looks of it, so that is very unfortunate. MC being good to control that Zelnaga. Carriers are spotted. Now, this allows Stefano, once that Spire is being made, to go for Carapace straight away and immediately start making Corruptors. Look at his gas bank. He has to buy time. Maybe he has to sacrifice this base entirely because I don't think he can keep this alive unless, well, Savano with some good transfused micro here to keep the spore alive, using the ground army to attack on the other side of the map. Yep. More queens being produced, but he has a lot of money to get out a lot of corruptors. He go for Banelings. He's really looking to deal counter pressure here. Yeah, trying to find an opportunity where I can find some maybe drones here and there over at that third base, but at the same time, the carrier's moving back a little bit against that. Those spores finish just in time to try and actually hold on against that fourth location. I thought it wasn't going to occur, but it's not too be as now 10 corruptors on the way bailing slow bailings walking kills some units but i mean beyond that he really wanted those probes oh links in links are in i mean <laughs> he knows the tale of the or story but getting to see all these gateways being walked in afterwards and not full production on both these stargates that's actually a really big deal for stefano so really clean scouting by him not bad. That's still a lot of carriers, though. They're going to try and find a position of weakness. But up above this base used to be an absolute nightmare for some people to deal with, as now we'll be launching a, uh, an attack from that location. But he sees all the corruptors. That was a kind of feeler uh, engagement here to see exactly what he was going to be working against, and he will move back. MC's so respectful. I think with this amount of carriers, maybe he can, could have actually beat the army if he got all the intercepts out. And you kind of see how good they are against these Corruptors. The plus one against no Carapace upgrade in the yeah, skies. Yeah, yeah. I think MC starting to realize, like, oh, my carriers are way better than your Corruptors right now. And a little ambitious for Stefano because he strayed his Corruptors away from the Queens and they were actually up creep, so they couldn't even transfuse. So as a fight is going to go on down here now, these Stalkers actually could help significantly. If he takes out all this Antia, that's still a lot of Corruptors. He could win this fight. Absolutely. I don't think he should be running these Ravagers into this fight unless he can land some Dream Biles. Yeah. And maybe he did just that here. Another carrier might be oh. falling. He's got so little health here. Big upgrades are finishing on both sides. and. Hatchery's being cancelled on the, <laughs> the good old 9 o'clock position here by MC. MC's playing good in this series. Yeah, he definitely is, definitely is. He's still up in supply right now. The Storms are moving across the good old MC composition here. of A ton of Stalkers to utilize that blink. Zealots, slow Zealots, still no charge available to them. And Transfuse is on this Spore Crawler to try and slow down the encroaching carriers that are going to try and breach this position. But I mean, even four Corruptors, you can't move in with four Corruptors against three carriers. No, the most important thing is all their Interceptors are already launched. So it's like you have to stop fighting, let them all go back into the carriers, then go with your Corruptors. That's where you have the best chance, the best opportunity. But he's having to work against all these Zealot run bys now. Uh, Stefano needs an answer to these kind of carrier plays. Uh, yes, and now he's got the Corruptors to the forefront here after the rematch. But blink forwards here, try and focus down some of these. Also, the charge up on the Void Ray. Storm goes down against the Corruptors here to try and bring them down. The Roaches on the left hand side are floundering, not doing anything. Banelings into the mineral line here as Stefano's trying to shut down as much as possible. But this army could just kill him. 
Stefan. That was big for Stefano. That definitely put through a span in the works for MC, but the supplies are dead even here, and 31 Stalkers on the field. Stefano just doesn't have a ground army to deal with this. I mean, he does have plus two Lings and Banes, but what's he going to do? And he wants to deal damage on the other side yeah. of the map. I mean, given up on the style of Beante as well, you can see with the Corruptors trying to deal with that Nexus, but not to be the case. It's He's got Roaches and Lings on the way. Unfortunately, I mean, is there only one carrier left? But uh, regardless of the fact, this is still going to be a, a heavy Stalker ball. 35 Stalkers going up against this. And if, if he controls the Blink correctly, he's going to dominate. And so far, MC has looked very good with his Blink Stalker micro. And this, this Zerg army, like, if you had way bigger numbers yet yeah, could absolutely contest here but that is so much Protoss here one carrier left in the skies but I mean that it's gonna get biled here in the middle has to back off the Corruptors uh -huh. are all taken out the ground army also kind of flummoxing over here and the bio still landing but that Protoss army is absolutely oh, being worn oh. out and uh, the Zerg is being taken out here he's dropping in supply like a fly yeah he might have lost the carrier but it doesn't really matter as he walks into some of those corrosive files here to MC but MC is going for the battering round strategy moving up this ramp here to try and take down the remaining forces. If he keeps blinking back, that'd be great, but he walks forwards into this just to take down and focus down some of these Ravagers wherever he can. Blink back. No reinforcements coming along. Now they're here. There's no war prism to be able to get this really fast into the fray quickly, and he's going to move away from this engagement. Uh, if he had a war prism with this, Stefano would be dead right now. That would really help him out so much, but Stefano battling through and through. I thought he was dead there for sure. He's long distance mining. Oh, he does have more drones, but yeah, that long distance mining, MC safely set up on four bases in that right now. This is not good for the Frenchman. Trying to find a different avenue of attack at the moment here is MC. If he can breach this location, it's going to be fantastic for him. Storm some of those Bane links. They're going to be very important to try and get... They have to get huge connections. Against the amount of Stalkers that are here, also more High Templars entering the fray, he's going to push him off this base and cripple his economy. Oh, and the Storms, they're pretty damn good as well. And warping into a, an arc on there, but Stefano takes it out. But that is so much Stalkers again in here. He's Even the, Yeah, the Overlord's flying in as well, and that's kind of the last hurrah. Waving the white flag is... Stefano, GG. MC 2-1 against Stefano right now. One game away from winning this tournament. And Stefano looks flummoxed. What are you supposed to do? For him, this carrier problem certainly exists right now. He doesn't have much answer to it. And then the follow-up of Stalkers, MC man, is coming in with that one-two punch. He certainly is. MC, you know, he's concocting this formula on the fly here and he's like, you know what? This this two Stargate carrier. It's not bad. This seems pretty good, James. It right. seems pretty good. Might as well keep on going with it. And Stefano, yeah, he. If I was his coach right now, he needs to know that I need to get drones up faster. I don't yep. need to invest in this, that. I just need drone, drone, drone. He's not super committing to these adept attacks or this oracle attack. Like Stefano's getting all those defenses ready against stuff that he's probably practiced against mm. or seen. But MC, he's being a bit of a cheeky boy. He's skipping all of that aggression, going for his own economy build up his own carriers and stuff so Stefano needs to start cutting some corners here and just kind of start adapting and, and it does feel like Stefano in the last two games has been working with I have to repeat it incomplete information mm -hmm. not really being able to kind of sniff out exactly what MC is going to be doing but two games in a row the fleet beacon fast the carriers fast here you're seeing as these corruptors try to move in and as I was saying before away from these they didn't have much energy for transfuse but any little extra you can get here in terms of the anti or against Carriers like this is going to help a lot. You're not meant to be fighting carriers at like 150 supply no. against 150 supply carriers, Correct. you know? So Stefano definitely needs to get a bit more greedy. And I know, I know the feeling, like when you're feeling so unsafe that you can die to anything coming at any minute. And when he's constantly scanning with these links, it's like, okay, what's actually coming? In that time that you're not making units, you should be making drones. And like getting all your injects going on, just making sure that you know what's going on. But here, he's, he's having to play an incomplete game, incomplete information. And that's so hard to do against MC right now. All right, let's get to it then. He is down at the moment, but can he come back in the bottom left of Daybreak, a map that he is known for? In the red, it is Stefano. And spawning over in the top right, currently 2-1 up. It is the boss toss, it is MC. He's looking very cool in the chair, isn't he? Like, very relaxed. Not as if he's playing in front of a few thousand people or anything like that. He was made for this. He was yeah. born for this. Every single time he would 
raw every time he would say, you know, things that were interesting on microphones that I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> he was born to do this, like be an entertainer and be a competitor. And, you know, I mean, it's such a storied history between these two as well, be it show matches, be it meeting in high profile matches. It was you know, back and forth between the two. Like, in terms of the, the record overall, it was pretty darn close between these two in an era where no non-Korean could hang with Koreans, apart from Stefano. Yeah, I mean, in total between these two before this match happened, seven to five in series oh, for really? Stefano. 21 to 19 in maps for Stefano. So close. Really close. And I mean, Stefano really was, at his time, the greatest foreigner of all of time, course, right? Like, yeah, absolutely yeah. changed the state of the game very early on. Foreigners all over the shop and getting to go up against these big boys and actually give them a true run for the money. Money And like, at one time, all the Koreans that came over to these foreign events, it was like, who do you want to play? And like, people say Serral now, but it was Stefano back then. Absolutely. He truly was yeah. a legend. Yeah. I mean, I, I think back to, again, for me, this is a huge trip down uh, Nostalgia Avenue when it comes to WCS Europe, because all of these guys played there. And I think 2013, when MC goes up against Duck Duck in the finals, uh, when uh, Duck Duck cried because he was so emotional about that win, the only person to beat him before that in that season was Stefano in mm. group stages. So it's just, yeah, these guys tussled a lot, uh, and they really took each other to the limits. And now MC, in 2023, is taking Stefano to the limits with early carriers. What What is this world? <laughs> What is this world indeed? <laughs> like, yeah, we have to start looking at it from like Stefano's perspective here. Like, what can he do differently against this? We've talked about the scouting, we've talked about potentially build orders and stuff. Maybe I think he just needs to be more greedy. Like, pick yeah. backstage, he's just going to be like, man, you need to drone up more, you need to drone up more. And it's, it is scary to do. Stargate opening again for MC. It is pretty much the go to for all processes out there. <laughs> is that what Pig's saying back there? He's just, yeah, he's yeah, going, yeah. He's going, Stefano, Stefano, you, you need to drone more, mate. <laughs> well, he's got himself his third base on the way. And again, if there was ever a map that Stefano looked excellent on, like PS to resistance every single time, it was Daybreak, mainly because he probably played it several thousand times back then. It was in the map pool for a long, long time, uh, and he looks great doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, this this map gives me so many memories, man. Yeah, like, yeah. freaking... Uh, top against MVP in uh, G oh GSL, God, yeah. where it's like, yo, man, I'm going to land four ghosts in your base and nuke everything. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is so damn cool. Yeah, definitely was. We saw a lot of Broodlord Infester on that particular area uh, down the middle of this map a long time ago as well, back in yeah, the day. Yeah, I, I remember that being like one of the original whiners about Broodlord Infester being too strong. And for like yeah. a year and a half straight, people were like, ah, cut it out. And then as soon as it got nerfed, people were like, Oh yeah, it was a bit strong. Oh, you, I guess. you were right. I'm like, right. yeah, no shit. Like that was freaking <laughs> strong. Holy crap! Can you imagine fungal being way bigger, stunning your units, and yeah. like being instant? I mean, as Loco reminded us, they changed fungal. Uh, oh, just uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good ten years ago. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice of them. <laughs> so that was good. That was useful. Yeah, hot take, Loco. <laughs> As we find ourselves here. Now, with MC, sim similar similar opener to get things going, of course. And the big question is, is, is he going to try the carriers again? And at the same time, is Stefano going to get this information nice and swiftly uh, to be able to react? I like that Loco said that during the non-legacy part of the tournament as well. <laughs> like, if he said that while watching one of these old maps, I could have understood. But it's like... It's <laughs> It was probably in like a TVT as well. I was like, oh yeah, the change vocal, man. It was very nice of him, very nice. Okay, does actually get the probe over at this third base. This is one of the nicest starts that Stefano's had in this series, honestly. To see another probe moving down here. Quite a lot of adepts being made this game, so a little bit of a shimmy up and no fleet beacon on the way this game. So no, MC Smile Council. I kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I like everything MC's been doing so far, honestly. I think he's playing very solid, but yeah, yeah. the fact that you win with that build twice in a row, different situations, obviously, like third base is being close and whatnot, and just, as you said, the Cloud Kingdom, utilizing that above the fourth base yes. was like a very nice uh, position. Yeah. But yeah, Daybreak, it's a different beast, man. Like, you look at this, getting across that map as easily, very difficult to do. I mean, honestly, I'd kill for just like a mass blink stalker attack from MC, because it would be just picture perfect. That was MC back then. Just lots of stalkers, lots of blink. There we go. Blink in research. Oh, you know what I'd like? A lot of blink stalkers, a lot of sentries. Like, as he's winning, types the GG force. in force fields. And it's like, <laughs> oh my god. Or he types boss tosses back, baby. And then he goes across the stage and like just breaks the fun. Yeah, like, just ah! lifts him up and body slams him. No! He's like, hell yeah. <laughs> no, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. But this game, the Vaudre, the Oracle, oh, they've done what they can, right? He hasn't really gone for drones against Stefano's 
definitely droning up nicely this game, getting his upgrades on the go. Trying to slow down MC in whatever way he can, but MC just being good about not showing what he's doing. Mm. Stefano did get to scout this game, get to see did quite a few stalkers here, which is different. Ooh. Didn't see much behind it. Nice denial by MC. Yeah, very nice indeed. But he did see a heightened number of stalkers compared to his previous games. And extra gateways as yep. well. So Stefano's probably thinking, Whew, not carriers again. That's good, that's good. Bane Lanesh does drop. Drunk out still climbing a little bit, squeezing them out here and there. And honestly, he's droned up very decently this game. Because up until about this point, Proros can equal you on the probe count, but it's now when Zerg can shoot up to a good 70, 80, that they get a little bit of a lead there. And he's doing just that look. Yeah, definitely. Robo facility on the way, getting these gases as well, hopefully for maybe the warp prism and then try and start launching it. How many gateways are we on, actually? Like, he's got two more, just about to finish up. Oh, okay, so, well, three and then two, so we're up at the five here at the moment. It's not exactly the most that you could possibly have here to start things off, but it's still going to apply quite a bit of pressure. Stefano's got to respect it. He certainly does. Like, the plus one roaches with speed finishing up very soon. He's timed up his upgrades very nicely. A lot of Zergs these days love the melee upgrades first, but Stefano really opting for those uh, those range upgrades. Second Stargate starts again with a Flea Beacon. I mean, MC's loving that build, man. Shoot some of this. Yeah, the Oracle comes in and actually helps out against those Zerglings, pushes them back to get things going. But he's being tricky here. He's being tricky. He's trying to lull a kind of Stefano into a bit of a, a weird spot, blinks away from these links so they don't actually get the wraparound, keeps them focusing these down here. Doesn't want to get that full surround on these, otherwise those Roaches will come in and actually chew them up completely. So we'll lose a few more. And actually, some of this has been seen by an Overseer at the back. The Stalkers got chased all the way away. Ah, uh, they certainly did. We'll catch some of these Adepts that were sitting at that Zelnar here and the stalkers they are still fighting for their lives here these roaches and stuff are upgraded a little bit here but stefano getting very eager over here but it's kind of different to the game previous he's taken a fifth base behind it yeah. the scouting in the main base he knows now these games carriers starts to spire in time this is a much better situation for Stefano. Nine drones on the way as well. He's doing a lot of good stuff, because you've got to remember, like that old saying, the best defense is a good offense, and being aggressive against his opponents, keeping these units on his side of the map, that is very good for him. I, don't, I do think that Stefano's taken the limiter off a little bit here in this game. He's As soon as like MC tries to take an inch, Stefano's taking a mile with it. He stepped in with those Blink Stalkers, and then the Lings voraciously kept attacking here. Goes in for a surround against this as well. Overcharge will be activated to keep those alive. Uh, but again, with that down, maybe you can launch an attack later on. Tries to more Banelings in here, actually connecting with all of those Zealots finishing it on up here. But yeah, he's just trying to trade off where he can. Maybe getting a bit too eager. Yeah, MC's been very good about the upgrades, by the way. Like, yeah. plus one air weapons on the go. Plus two ground weapons just about to finish. He's done very good in that regard. Okay, Stefano, I just looked at his drone count, James. Tell me what it is. Nine? Uh, what the hell? You know, he, uh, what? He, he was taking what we were saying, and he went another level here. Yeah, he did. And now, Doing all that damage that he did on the other side of the map, which wasn't a lot of eco damage, but he just kept him at bay. Now the world is his oyster. If MC was charging across the map, I'd have been worried for Stefano, but the fact that he's backing up a little bit, just feeling maybe the pressure a little, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna sit back, get my fourth base situated. That is perfect for oh, Stefano. Are we on route to have a split map scenario on Daybreak? I mean, we could be. We could be. We, we could be, but the thing is, this, this army of MC it lacks that kind of finesse like if they take Agreed. a true yeah. brutal yeah. fight yeah like it really comes down to like is the zerg gonna smash you or not and the thing is stefano is going to be real able to remax very quickly because i'm looking at all those resource arrows in the bottom here and they are all in favor of the frenchman and look at that that is a massive income advantage well it bloody well should be with 91 workers <laughs> bloody well should be james bloody well should be call blimey over here stefano is absolutely pushing his macro stick over here getting the air upgrades as well actually going for corrupted attack upgrade that's something that isn't as good as the carapace just because the interceptors they all have two attacks each and the corruptors already have a good base yeah, armor yeah. but you know we'll let it pass we'll let it pass for now as uh, lings here just finding themselves in a little bit of an engagement trading off against some of these stalkers to attack them off uh, but already scouting down this fourth base and understanding the only problem that i usually see for a protoss when we kind of look at this bat is that technically the distance between the fourth location that you're taking here and your natural Natural is very far. So Zerg can try and exploit that a little bit with the speed that they're usually able to exude. We'll see how MC is going to deal with that if it comes to pass. Yeah, like Stefano's been relying on a double Evo upgrades here to get like 111 on the ground. And I mean, the, gr the ground armor does help a bit. I mean, once spells come online, like Storm and Disruptors, obviously, Proros don't really give a crap about your armor upgrades. Mm, yeah, but yeah. it does help for these early engagements for sure. And 
He needs to keep remembering, okay, he's utilizing all the upgrade facilities as well, both very much focused on that. MC's army supply is pretty damn big, and this creep spread is starting to navigate across the middle of the map here, and that, that <laughs> extra base here, the fourth base, Ooh. pretty exposed. Yes, it is. How much reinforcement is going to come down here to try and hold this off? There's already storms on some banelings that we're hitting up towards the north here. Corrosive files to try and land on some of this. The actual the pylon does not go down just yet, but the cannon is now uh, underpowered. And they'll try to blink around on this left-hand side here to try and cordon off some of these units, try and catch them and make sure that they will be eliminated from the battlefield. Beautiful movement by MC. He just kind of wrapped around there. It was like, you are not getting out of here. You did not take down my fourth base. Stefano, is he only on lair tech amidst all of this? I think so. Like, he had the money and funds to go to Hive. Okay, now it starts just a little bit late here because this army of MC, oh. it is big, James, and it is looking to deal damage on this side of the map now. And does Stefano have the time to get the army prepared against this? And all these Corruptors, I mean, how are they going to even get towards some of these carriers in some of these modes? Blinks forwards here, trying to put on even more pressure. The count of the Corruptors, you can see them all left hand side, trying to find an area to fight. Storms go down on a lot of those Banelings, trying to retreat back on all of that as well. But Banelings are going to crash in on all of those Stalkers. They blink back. Storms are everywhere against this. The Zerg has swarmed in, trying to eliminate that ground army, but the carriers still remain. They certainly do. These Corruptors got melted amidst that. MC is the one that falls more in supply here, but Stefano, he lost 17 drones whilst this was all going on and feeling the pressure knowing that these links can't shoot up he's going to dive across the map he could have actually run into that natural there i think he was respecting mc a bit too much yeah, yeah definitely so the hatchery goes down in the middle of the map here which is always too usual once these fights go down through the middle of all of this mc has actually repaired all of those defenses down towards the bottom so these cannons will fend off these zerglings for now sorry probe uh, as those carriers here are going to be able to rendezvous with a little bit more of this army that mc's trying to rebuild through the middle I don't real. I don't think the Archon and Stalker realize how lucky they were. Yeah, <laughs> there was yeah. a lot of Zerg surrounding them there. One carrier might be left behind here. Oh no! That is a Rotterdam carrier over there, just kind of, uh, uh -oh. you know, getting home from the club. A little bit lost there in the middle of the map. He tried. He tried his best. He tried his best. He tried his best. Great Aspire will now start for Stefano. Has lost a lot of his eco here, though. And now you see that MC is the one that's leading in the drone count. He's been solidly on four bases the whole time. Stefano will be running out of his main natural and third base at this moment in time. And remember, these aren't Legacy of the Void maps. They're very old school maps. So the amount of bases that you actually have to work with, very minimal. All right. So he's going to focus down at the Nexus here. Recall actually does go down. That will be in time here. And actually push this on away. A carry gets absolutely obliterated, though, in the crossfire. That was a nice little trade for Stefano. Yeah. I mean, he needs to run away from those stalkers, but... Yeah, keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I know I'm a greedy boy. I'd have tried to go from that Nexus, maybe lost an extra several Corruptors, but it wasn't a new fresh mining base. So I think that was very mature decision-making by Stefano. I don't know if you're a greedy boy, man. Last time I asked you if you were hungry, you said no. Oh, that's true, that's true. But I did eat, like, 11 brownies right before then, so I was pretty greedy before. <laughs> I forgot about that, actually. Never mind. <laughs> These Bailey's going to roll in and try to do as much damage to this mineral line as possible, and they actually do kill off five workers, but his melee upgrades are not quite there to be able to actually fully destroy that mineral line. That poor probe! Aww. Okay, okay, he saw it was surrounded, so that's why he was trying to kill it. Those shield batteries were going to go the whole time. That is a lot of Zerg, but a lot of Storm on all these low health units here. And the Corrosive Bios don't land on the Corruptors. Okay, okay, okay. Multiple carriers do fall, but Stefano's supply is dwindling massively. And the Bostos is coming to town. So much of his army is in these Corruptors here. And again, so once they've done with the carrier, what else are they going to actually they do against this. I mean, there are roaches and the ravages down to that left hand side, but that's dead weight for the moment. He needs to somehow deal with this. Blinks forward here to try and shut this down. And Stefano, he's dwindling in supply at the moment, and it looks like MC is going to get this. It certainly does. I don't think anything can stop him at this point in time. Stalkers blink forward. That's when you know the Burrows oh. are feeling very good about their situation. And right now, MC is moments away, and Stefano knows it. GG! <laughs> The champion of the Legends Tournament is your Bostos. It is MC. Who would have thought it? MC himself is able to take the Legends Tournament here and gives the thumbs down to his opponent. $17,500 will go to MC as the champion of the Legends for StarCraft II. Not a bad payday, not a bad day at all, solidifying that he is the one true legend in StarCraft II. It is the boss <laughs> toss. You love to see it. Oh. A little bow as well. Respectful to the audience as always. And Stefano realizing, hey man, good game.
game. He did a wonderful job as well today. Honestly, all these players today did way better than I thought they would. What a great show. I'm smiling ear to ear, man. What a tournament here from this. What a thing to see in 2023, Ben. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Very soon we'll be getting to hear from the man himself. Got to give a round of applause to Stefano as well. He put on a damn good show. He took out MVP, but the boss toss, honestly, kind of the underdog of the day. Great, great, great day. Absolutely. Well, let's hear from the man from himself. It's MC. MC, not only did you keep your promise to MMA, you are the champion of our Legends tournament here at Gamers 8 in Riyadh. So, real easy. How does it feel? Uh, it's very good because, you know, it's maybe almost uh, six years ago, my last offline tournament. And then Gamer Ace made, made me for this offline tournament. So, yeah, it's, uh, if it's my last tournament, uh, it was my just champion, so best uh, career for me. زي ما تشوفون سالنا ام سي السؤال الاول في المقابله انه هو قدر انه يحافظ على وعده الام ام اي انه يفوز البطوله قبل كم سنه والى الان مستمر انه يحافظ انه يكون هو الشامبيون فسالناه السؤال الاول وش احساسك بعد الفوز؟ يقول بصراحه يمكن هذه اول مره اقدر اجيب شامبيون شيب من ست سنوات زياده على كذا انا بحاول اني احافظ على الاشياء هذا وممكن هذه تكون اخر بطوله لي في الكارير حقي بالكامل بس اذا هذه كانت اخر واحده فانا جدا سعيد فيها. You talked to us a little bit before about your practice, but have you talked to any recent Protoss players? Uh, did you get builds from anybody? Uh, I just watched it Classics games and asked him how beat PBZ. So he told me uh, four gate adapt is very good, but I used the first game and I lost. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I just watched the Hero and Classics games. They using Stalkers, High Templars, Carriers. So I think it's OP mix right now. So I just use it three games and then win. سألنا على طول MC عن المقابلة اللي سويناها مع كلاسيكو التجهيزات حقاته دائما تتذكرون كان دائما قاعد يتكلم عن الاستراتيجيات حقاته وانه يحاول يطلع شيء جديد الآن سألنا MC إنه كيف أنت قدرت إنك تتعلم الاستراتيجيات حقت البروتوس بشكل عام يقول إني رحت سألت كلاسيك وأوش الاستراتيجية الأفضل اللي هو ممكن إنه يسويها في ال ال PVZ matchup. فيقول انا سويت الاستراتيجيه هذه في الجيم الاول وخسرت للاسف فرجعت على طول رحت سويت استراتيجيه ثانيه وكنت اتابع كلاسيك هيرو كثير عشان احاول اتعلم منهم Well this is a match up that used to go a little bit more in Stefano's favor so how does current Protoss feel to you Um I think Protoss is now weak so <laughs> because uh, main tournament is just one Protoss for classic so uh I'm just cheering for classic and uh, please uh, Protoss Bob, please. سألنا إم سي سؤال الثالث عندنا في المقابلة نتكلم عن وضعية أو حالة البروتوس ريس الآن في اللعبة بشكل عام ونتكلم على موضوع إنه هل أنت تشوف إنه كويس وضعه ولا لا؟ كان يقول إنه صراحة أشوف إنه البروتوس الآن من أضعف الريسز اللي موجودة معنا والدليل إنه في البلاي أوفس في الحدث الأساسي عندنا في جيمر زيت كلاسيك هو الوحيد اللي موجود في البلاي أوفس ومعه أو هو يلعب بالبروتوس فقاعد يقول إنه تكفون سووا بوف للبروتوس. Well, MC, I know you said this might be your last and it's great to go out on top, but I know we want to see more StarCraft from you for as long as we all may watch StarCraft. But if it is the last one, then this is your last chance to look down the lens, say something to your fans. What would you like to say? Yeah, long time no see. I know sometimes uh, fans DM to me, miss me. Uh, did you miss me? Uh, I'm here, Boston is back. But later, I'll be back. Thank you. أعطينا إم سي فرصة إنه يقول شيء للفانز اللي عنده بخصوصا إنه هذه بتكون آخر بطولة له في احتمال إنها تكون آخر بطولة له فكان يقول إنه إذا أنتم مشتكتوا لي أنا شوفوني أنا رجعت الباستاس رجع وزيادة على كذا يقول إنه أنا راح أرجع لكم إن شاء الله بس ما ندري وش يقصد. So as our very first winner of the Legends tournament here at Riyadh at Gamers 8, we invite you to sign your name to the wall and be remembered forever. الآن زي ما تشوفون أعزائي المشاهدين أم سي راح يوقع معنا كاميرا الفائزين في كل أرض الأبطال في جيمرز 8 بيكون عندنا فرصة نشهد الحدث هذا لايف راح نشوفه يوقع على الكاميرا وهذه بتكون حرفيا علامته على موسم الجيمرز في الرياض. Once more the champion of our StarCraft 2 Legends at Riyadh Gamers 8 it's MC. 
اعزائي المشاهدين الان راح نرجع على طول استوديو تحليلي بعد ما شفنا ام سي توج يكون هو البطل للستار كرافت تو ليجندز خلونا نروح الان نشوف الاستوديو وش ممكن يقول عن هذه المباراه. باكي. The Boss Stars is back. The year is 2023 and Protoss finally wins the tournament. All it took was just bring MC back from the dead. We are back over here at the desk and we're going to talk about that pretty damn awesome PVZ best of five we just watched. A lot of Stefano sentiments before we headed into this grand finals, guys. But MC has done it, Zombie Grub. Well, I forgot that carriers have actually always been good, you know? Like, that's my <laughs> bad, actually. Uh, but uh, it's clear that from that first, uh, it was Frost, right? Where he first brought out the carriers, that Stefano just kind of had an awkward response. Now, that was a lot because of the way the game went. Mm -hmm. But then it was really confirmed on Cloud Kingdom that Stefano just kind of looked uncomfortable against the carrier into Blink Stalker composition. I think he gives Stefano another week after knowing that that could be something he's up against, and he does fine against it. But MC choosing the right strategies after that first adept all and failed. Yeah, what well, it all started kind of normal, right? A fun PVZ where Stefano just had a lot of creep in the first game, a lot of roaches and lings and ravages. But MC found his way to the Stargates, and he never looked back. Yeah, no, he really did. Once he got, you know, figured out these carries are pretty good, man. He really did stick by them. He still had some, I feel like, fun back and forth moments, but it really just kind of felt like MC. And his carriers, his high Templars, his Stalkers, like I said, it's a bit of an OP composition, man. I can't disagree. You know, these things kill me all the time. I don't even play Zer, so. Well, and what really <laughs> stood out as well from all these guys, right, especially the Koreans that we haven't seen. Stefano, we still saw somewhat recently. Their macro, it's still yeah, on it's... point. If you don't yeah. disrupt the flow of the things they want to do, they get to where they want to be real damn quick, Zombie Grub. There was a time where Stefano was 90 out of 170, but besides that, the macro is very good. It is actually kind of impressive to see that. I think a lot of us were expecting to see more faltering in the early game, you know, even more supply blocks, more awkward answers, and no, it was actually pretty good on the macro. We even had some highlight micro moments, and MC allowing us to once again witness his Warp Prism micro was very nice of him, of course, in the earlier PVT, but then Blink Stalker micro. He's always been pretty good at it, and he showed it again here today. What I absolutely love, what is that towards the end, Rachel asking, did you talk to any of the Pro Brothers players? He's like, yeah, I spoke with Classic. He gave me the adapt build. That doesn't really seem all that good. But then I spoke with Hero, and he told me carriers are good, so I went for it, and it really didn't feel like I was watching Hero, but then I was watching a Hero who actually tried to save his carriers a couple times. You know, there was a point in the Grimmer thing where we're like, whoa, you can target fight with those carriers? You know, <laughs> that might have saved Hero a couple times yesterday as well, right? Yeah. So, yeah, MC, I uh, don't want to say he did it better, but he definitely seems to have a good idea of what to do with them. And yeah, kind of cool man you know he comes in he's like yeah i watched a few games you know got a feel for it obviously just found his way and i could have never expected that mc would have won like i think he would have been my third choice like out of yep. my ranking coming into this so mm -hmm. super cool to see him doing it finding his way and especially against a stefano that kind of figured out you know mvp in the last match as well he just couldn't figure out these carries so Miguel Polara said he was smiling ear to ear watching these nerds battle it out on the old maps. But how did you enjoy Polaris' commentary over there? I thought it was fantastic. I'm yeah. pretty sure that you're out for his job and he's out for your job. Well, I get a better do. trade there. I know that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Bob G. Mobo, here I'm at. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was fun, right? What? I'm, hey, I'm quaking in my boots, you know? I feel like we're going to have the Kolaris Invitational next weekend at this rate. <laughs> All right, final thoughts real quick. We saw four legends. Wadi, how do we rate it? 10 out of 10, man. I had a great time casting it. I loved, like, nostalgia and over in it all. It was so much fun. Zombie Grub. And I cannot wait to uh, improve that 10 out of 10 with tomorrow's Group of Legends. We're looking forward to it. That's going to be a lot of fun, but you know what's going to be even more fun? The quarterfinals of the main Stark of Two tournament, because that's, of course, what today is all about as well. We've got a couple of amazing matches coming up. Clem versus Maru is going to be the first quarterfinals. We're going to take a quick break, and then we go back to what we came for here, and that is the Stark of Two over at Games 8 in Riyadh. We'll see you guys soon.